time talking about investing in stocks and bonds, but what about investing in art? Actually, it's interesting when you look at one index that tracks the art world, the Art Price 100 Index simulates investment in the art market's 100 most successful artists. It's outperformed the S&P 500 over the past two decades, and it tracks pieces from renowned artists such as Andy Warhol, whose piece Mick Jagger will be auctioned by art auctioneers Callie Abbott in celebration of their 10th anniversary on December 6th. Bob Callie, Canadian art specialist and president of Callie Abbott, joins us here in studio. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, it's a pleasure, John. Nice to be here. As you know, we, we like to talk about how you invest in stocks and how you mm -hmm. invest in bonds, but when you're trying to evaluate a piece of art, what goes into that process? It's not uh, it's not dissimilar when you're looking at, certainly as investment. I mean, you're looking at the artist, so who has created the artwork, of course. You're looking at the quality. The quality is very important. If the artist is having a good day or a bad day, the period, what the artist is best known for, best period, subject matter, the condition, um, what's in fashion as well. So very much it does reflect um, the, uh, the stock market as well in okay. that way. A lot of different considerations. Are there a lot of different art investors? Oh, there are, absolutely. I mean, with uh, at Cowley Abbott, we serve uh, private collectors, of course, prominently, but we also serve public collections. We're offering work by the Art Gallery of Ontario this season, um, as well as corporate collections as well. And so you find all types of collectors, uh, certainly across the, uh, across the prism. When you're doing auctions, you know, I, I guess the stock market is a real-time mm -hmm. voting machine. What's that like? How close does ultimately, you know, people I'm sure see the movies and they see the, the bidding wars. Uh, how close can you get to actually having the right price to meet the supply and demand, uh, et cetera, of, of, of a piece of art? Well, part of the market, I mean, part of the part of our jobs as auctioneers is ensuring that we're estimating the artwork properly. So we're looking at the current market, we're looking at what similar works have sold for, and trying to provide an estimate that reflects the market. However, in quality and rarity, which drives all investment markets, as you know very well, you're finding you can certainly exceed what's expected. And we've been having that. We've been selling a major private collection now. This will be the third season and final season offering it. 80% of those works have exceeded the high end of expectations, sometimes doubling and tripling their estimates. And is that because there is quite quite literally this investor interest uh, in, in the appreciating value of a piece of uh, art? That's certainly part of it. However, it's also, it is the quality and it's the rarity. And of course, that does that does play into it, is that the investment opportunity there plays into the, the quality, and in many cases, the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to, to uh, acquire some of these works of art. How does Canadian art fit into the global landscape? Because you guys are um, well-versed in, in both. Mm -hmm but have a particular specialty as well in what's happening here in Canada. We do. Uh, Canadian art, I mean, when you're looking at historical Canadian art, you do find that, of course, uh, predominantly it is Canadian collectors. However, that does also include Canadian collectors abroad and even sometimes relatives of Canadian collectors, and that's grown over time. You know, we had the we had Steve Martin had the Lauren Harris exhibition in, in mm. 2016, which brought Lauren Harris's work to Los Angeles and Boston. So there's a lot more, um, certainly, interest from uh, collectors abroad. However, we do also have artists who trade, who do trade outside of Canada. Um, um, Jean-Paul Riopelle trades in Europe and the U.S., as well as Guido Molinari, Sorel Etrog. So there's many artists as well that are Canadian that, that do have the interest of international collectors. Nice opportunity to talk about some of that Canadian talent over the years. Okay, mm -hmm. well, you, you mentioned a few names there, uh, including Lauren Harris. I think we can show a few pieces that you've brought with, uh, uh, w with you today. Mm -hmm. um, may, let's start with the Lauren Harris piece, and maybe you can tell us a little bit more about... Um, what it's uh, deemed to be worth and, mm -hmm. and a little bit more context on it. Of course, uh, so this is a, what we call these oil sketches. So these were the works that the, that the group of seven actually painted when they were uh, outside. So this work is 12 by 15 or a little bit larger than that, excuse me. Carries on some of 300 to $500,000. Uh, it's a Lake Superior work. That subject's always very popular. We sold a very similar work from the same private collection in uh, December of last year for just over a million dollars, more than doubling the estimate. With this work as well, there's a, a larger work, a canvas that actually associates to the work. So he created a larger painting from this painting, and that tends to also raise the interest of collectors as well, making it a little more rare. Hmm. And uh, there's an Emily Carr piece there as there well. There is. We yeah. actually have two Emily Carrs yeah. on this set. Um, and so showing the difference between size, which can be, of course, very important, and also association with other works. Uh, the smaller work by Emily Carr is a fantastic smaller painting by the artist to work on paper. That's on the uh, on the left. And that's uh, valued at seventy to $90,000. On the right, it's a little more of a rare work, and it's also a larger work. And it also relates to several other works of art by Emily Carr. So the one on the left is seventy to $90,000, The Forest Edge, 
fantastic little work by the artist. And then the larger work is $250,000 to $350,000. It's uh, totem poles, which are very popular with collectors. We actually sold a canvas of totem poles just last fall for just over $3.1 million. Hmm, wow. And so sometimes this can be an individual uh, collector, <laughs> but to your earlier point, I mean, it can be institutions. I mean, we're, we're in bank earnings season. I think That's the right. banks have some pretty big collections themselves. They do. You find both TD and RBC have incredible collections. They've always been strong supporters of culture in Canada, as have many of the many of the public institutions as well. And so you find incredible collections. I mean, even looking at, at TD, who has incredible uh, post-war Canadian art, including Molinari and including Jack Bush as well. Um, and so you do find that. You find that across this country. We're very fortunate to see our works uh, in public collections. We, we started the segment by referencing Andy Warhol. I mm -hmm. believe there's a Warhol, uh, the Mick Jagger That's right. uh, piece of art. Tell us a little bit more about, and this one is, uh, this, 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 there's an auction on the horizon here. There is. So the auction's uh, Wednesday, De December the 6th, so uh, it's next week. So this work by Andy Warhol, um, it's a series of works that Warhol did. He was uh, good friends with Mick Jagger. He created them from Polaroids, in fact. He took photos of them when he was staying at his home. And so this work's carrying an estimate of 135000 to 175000 uh, Warhol has been incredibly popular, of course, uh, leads the market as paintings have sold for over $100 million. This is a print by the artist, and so again, 135 to 175. Uh, we actually sold a suite of four, uh, four prints of, of the Queen just uh, last spring, and those fetched just under a million dollars. So there's a great deal of interest in Warhol's work, not only across Canada, but we also uh, attract uh, international attention for those works. So this is a great learning lesson. It's gonna be a lot for, I guess, the first time observers mm -hmm. of the investing world that is art. What's a, what's a final thing just for people to think about if they're curious about getting into investing in art? Well, just like any kind of investment, research. Research and also aligning yourself with experts that can, that can assist you, that have, your, you know, that have your, your best interest in mind. And so certainly coming along and going to the auction previews, you know, there's no pressure to buy. The previews and the auctions are open to the public, but also going to museums and learning about the art that you may have, a, you may have an interest in. And then when you finally do make that decision to invest, uh, you're doing so in an educated way.